speedrunning came into the mainstream spotlight at the beginning of the 2010s, with games done quick acting as a catalyst to its success. Since then, many big-time streamers have made lucrative careers beating games as fast as possible, with many setting prolific world records. In today's climate, these records typically last a year or two in the most active communities, with some hanging on for a bit longer in less active games. But speedrunning hardly started in the last 10 years, and some games have histories dating back to the early 90s, which have spawned fantastic record streaks unheard of in today's playing field. That's what we're looking at today, the longest held records in speedrunning history. Before we begin, there are a few pieces of information that you need to have in order to understand how we're tracking time holding a record. We're not going to be looking strictly at single instances of a record being set, as some of these records were set and then lowered by the same person while they continued their reign. In other cases, a runner would set a record, have it be beaten by someone else, and then come back to regain the title and continue their reign in which case we're tracking the total time they've held the record. There's one more case we need to look at, where a runner would set a record and then more players would tie that record, which we will be counting as a lasting reign as the runner was the first to achieve the time without it being broken. For these reasons, we will be looking at the total time a record has been held by the same person, including ties, and with that out of the way, Let's have a look through the history books and see the strongest and most persistent runners that speedrunning has to offer. The first record comes from Goldeneye, a speedrunning community still going strong that started as the internet was just catching on. Unique for a non-racing game, the speedrunning scene for Goldeneye doesn't compete with full game runs. Instead, they developed a point system that operates on world records achieved on individual levels of the game. GoldenEye speedruns are tracked using in-game time, which uses an internal clock built into the game that displays mission time on the end-game screen. This is different than RTA, which stands for Real Time Attack, where runners use an external clock to track their time while they complete the game. A player's overall rank is determined according to where they stack up on the leaderboards across all of the game's levels, and there's one player that stood out above everyone else in the early days, Boss. Boss was a dedicated runner, and still has several unbroken records to the day in this game, but one of his longest lasting records would be archives on the Agent difficulty set on January 7th, 2003, with a time of 16 seconds. When Boss set his 16 second record, there wasn't much time left to save in the run. It was just that darn good, and has only been bested four times since it was beaten in July of 2017 meaning Boss's time stood for 5,458 days before it was untied. With records reaching back to sometime in 1999, the Ghost Valley 1 NTSC FLAP had a very contested history leading into the 2000s, being held by six different carters until 2005. There's one well-known dominant carter from this period, and it's of course none other than KVD first taking the Ghost Valley 1 record on September 11, 2005. With an improvement of just four hundredths of a second, his first time holding the record would last only two weeks, with EOJ and Oliver SG each laying claim to the record before the end of December. KVD would take it back Christmas Eve with a small improvement, but Oliver SG would defend the record with another slight improvement before the year ended. The Demon King wasted no time in 2006, as he took the record back on January 3rd and then lowered it three more times before the record was left at 11.65 for over a decade. The interesting thing about this record is that it had no video proof. Coming from a time when communities existed on the honor system, as the ability to capture video from game feeds wasn't widely available. Runners did try and challenge this time, however, Antistar and Scooby would each earn an 11.67, just .02 off the time claimed by KVD. But in 2019, with it being the only NTSC record standing without proof, this happened. KVD hit the incredible 11.63, cutting his old record in fantastic fashion, where he remains the record holder to this day, with a reign of 5,494 ongoing days.
Bunker 1 Agent is another GoldenEye record which was set back in 2003, this time by Wouter Jensen, who was still actively running the game. In August of 2003, he broke the previous world record of 18 seconds, setting the first 17 second time on the level, a huge achievement and landmark run for the GoldenEye community. There are lots of strategies that may not be apparent to casual viewers in a GoldenEye run. One such tactic being used to heavily reduce lag is by looking at the ground. By pointing your camera straight down, you reduce the number of polygons the game has to render on the screen. And as you can see, there are a ton of enemies in this level. For a full breakdown of the run in record history, I'll link a video going over the tech used and how it led to the record being defeated. The reasons are technical, and the amount of effort it took to pull off the run is nothing short of astounding. At the time Jensen set this record, it was the longest standing record in GoldenEye, with a very interesting history, as Jensen set the previous record of 18 seconds on June 25th, 1999. But on September 3rd, 2018, Carl Jobs would smash the record, setting the first 16 second run, and breaking a 15 year reign. The DKJP record is the longest held time in Mario Kart 64 history. The runner laying claim is a bit unique, as he's considered to be a track specialist, focusing almost exclusively on this track alone. It's of course William Lacey. Donkey Kong Jungle Parkway is a frustrating track to grind out times for, as it requires interactions with the coconuts being thrown from the jungle as you cut across the grassy sections of the track. It takes considerable mental fortitude to do attempts on this track, as the reset rate is fast and early, but this didn't deter Lacey. He would take the first 3 lap record on DKJP in 2001, lowering the time by almost a minute. He would then go on a 13 year streak where his domination of the track was only broken once for a total of 4 days by well known Super Mario Kart runner Sammy Chetton. In those 13 years, Lacey would lower the record by almost 4 seconds, setting a 2 12 99 on May 28, 2014. And then things got interesting. One of the current top time trialers, Matthias Rustemeyer, would claim the record later that year, and in true Lacey fashion, he would retake the track 5 days later, with this pattern repeating itself through to 2018. Lacey would achieve two notable times on this grind. The 2.12.77 on March 7, 2015 signified the time coming down a full 4 seconds from the time he first took the record, and the 2.12.35 on February 10, 2018, which would be the last time Lacey held the record. In his almost two decades of being active, he laid claim to the DKJP 3 lap time for 5,531 total days, the longest for any record in Mario Kart 64. But with some records being set that tie the task, who knows what the future holds. The third record from GoldenEye and the second by Boss, Damn Agent has come under a lot of attention in recent years, but the story started way back in 2002. As the opening stage of GoldenEye, it's likely a level you've played if you grew up in the 90s. It also happens to be one of Boss's first submitted times on the leaderboard, with a 54 second run being the second time he ever submitted. Since this is the agent category, there is only one objective for players to complete, bungee jump from the platform, which leaves only a few obstacles for players to get around. You see the lag reduction strat used constantly in this level, which requires a very well placed shot on the fence lock to maintain pace, as you're essentially blind firing to hit it. There has been a lot said about damn agent in the last few years, so I won't summarize it here. There are links below if you're interested but the record logistics are as follows. After Boss set the 53, it would be tied 214 times over the years, and only one person has broken this amazing feat. Care to chance a guess? It's none other than Carl Jobs. Carl has a reputation for untying old records in GoldenEye, and this wouldn't be an exception. At the time of his phenomenal run, he broke the reign of Boss that sat at an astounding 5,545 days. Oh! oh my god! Oh my god! We've arrived at the PAL F lap on Bowser's Castle 3 for Super Mario Kart. The previous SMK record was on NTSC, which runs at 60 Hz. 
compared to the PAL version, which runs at 50 hertz. The PAL version was reprogrammed so that it didn't appear laggy or sluggish on 50 hertz TVs, which also led to the versions being different enough that a leaderboard split was required. For this reason, PAL records are considerably harder to improve in the current era due to their increased level of optimization. This didn't stop KVD, however. He already dominated the track on NTSC, and the PAL version wasn't going to be an exception. First taking the record in 2004, he would lower the time nine times between then and 2015, losing the record to four different runners along the way, but always reclaiming it. His longest time without the record came in 2012, when it was taken by Sammy Chetton, whose new record would later be tied by Antistar, making the only tie in this track's history. Sammy is a longtime carter, getting his start in the 90s and being the only speedrunner in history to set records across four different decades, with his most recent time coming in 2020. It was going to take a special run for KVD to get the record back this time. It took him over a year, but on the waning days of 2013, he would break Sammy's record, and then in 2015, he would lower the time by his biggest margin yet, a .06 improvement for 1751, which is where the record currently stands, meaning that KVD's total reign is an ongoing 5,726 days. The final GoldenEye record on this list, and the last of Boss's long-standing records, Runway Agent was a fantastic time of mythic proportions. Set on March 9th, 2004, it was another record added to his belt notches of legendary times when he completed it in 22 seconds, but this one is a bit unique. The level starts with you inside a small building with a convenient case of grenades next to the player. This is significant because grenades can be used to damage boost yourself as you move, with each grenade saving a few fractions of a second, if executed properly. Like the previous GoldenEye records, there's a lot of nuance as to why this was beaten, and two great videos have already been made on it which are linked below. If you want the full details, be sure to check them out. The record stood for just short of 16 years, and on February 18th, 2020, Eric Bergman would use a strategy that he invented along with existing tech to shave the remaining time off to edge out the 21 second completion time. Boss's record stood for a remarkable 5,824 days, and when Bergman broke it, no one was sure how long it would be before the next person crossed the 22 barrier. But it would only take 7 months when Joachim Lung tied the 21 following in the giant footsteps left by Bergman on this legendary level. The most famous and recognizable track from the entire Mario Kart series, the PAL F-Lap for Rainbow Road has only four people lay claim to it over the year, Edwin Peters, Sammy Chetton, Kart7, and KVD. Lacking walls on any part of the track and requiring tight corner jumps, there's a reason this track has so few laying claim to the record. Sammy would draw first blood back in 2000 with a time of 1735, which would later be tied by Kart 7 in 2004 before she lowered her own time later that year. KVD would set his first record on the track on Boxing Day of 2004 and would lower it nine times in total, with only a 21 day tie from Kart 7 coming close to breaking his reign. Surprisingly, this track has never seen a second barrier broken for the PAL F lap. Since Sammy's time of 1735, the various improvements have pushed the time down to a 1706, which KVD set on June 5th, 2016. While it is humanly possible to achieve a 1699, the chances of shaving the final 0.07 seconds are very low for a few reasons. Looking at you, Thwomp, but never say never in speedrunning. It's worth mentioning that KVD's improvement in 2006 was a very busy year, not just for Super Mario Kart, but him as well, as he set a total of 175 new records that year, with the next closest person for the single records in a year title coming from Jamie White in 2002, with 130. Through his time trial career, KVD has set an incredible 534 new records, with the runner-up being Kart 7, with 247 to her name, and with an active community, who knows what the future holds. 
We're now into the records that for one reason or another have stood the test of time for over 6,000 days, and there's only one before we get into the top four. Released in Japan on November 21st, 1990 as a launch title for the SNES, F-Zero was the first racing game to hit the new console generation of the early 90s. Using the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 graphics application, it implemented techniques for simulated 3D from special rendering on 2D assets, giving the player the impression of a three-dimensional world. The huge technological increase and flashy gameplay had players flood to this game, so it should come as no surprise that the record set on it would be some of the longest in existence, with the first recorded times tracking back all the way to 1991. The times were submitted to a Japanese magazine, and the Deathwind 1 track stood for somewhere around 6,589 days. It's hard to tell when exactly the time was set before publication, so the best we can do is track it to the month the magazine released. Matsumoro Mitsuaki would submit a time of 1.43.87 that was published in November of 1992, the final known publication that included F-Zero times from Japan. It would stand for an incredible 18 years, when on February 14th, 2010, Legend, a prolific F-Zero runner, would set his sights on the track for the first time. Legend would set a 1.43.86 that day, then through 2010, he'd lower it an amazing 8 times, finally arriving at a 1.43.62. His record wouldn't enjoy a several thousand day reign as the current champ Edward would beat the time by one hundredth of a second on September 7, 2014, which is where the record currently stands. For the majority of this track's history, Mitsuaki would hold the record for an impressive 6,589 days. Thanks to the competitive nature of the early Japanese runners and the publication efforts by a single magazine, we have access to some of the earliest recorded times in F-Zero and all of speedrunning. Whether these times were legitimate or not is hard to say, as some magazines posted times that we now know are impossible achievements, but I like to think these F-Zero records are legit, as they have all gone on to be beaten. Deathwind 2, set by Karasawa Shigenori, is one of these records, with his first claimed record coming in August of 1991, with a time of 1.56.21. His time only stood for a month, as it was beaten in the next month's publication, but it wouldn't be the final time Shigenori posted. The final F-Zero time posted by Shigenori was a time of 1.52.08, coming in March of 1992. As the two-decade anniversary of the record approached, the current king of F-Zero, Edward, would get to work, and he'd shatter the time with a 1.51.77 on June 10th, 2011. This wouldn't be Edward's first time lowering the record either, as he went on to lower it six more times in 2011, but he didn't stop there, and as the years went on, he would go unchallenged, much as Shigenori had, setting record after record after record. Eventually, he'd arrive at a time of 1.49.98, being the first person to break the 150 barrier and also holding the current record on the track. Edward has held the Deathwind 2 record for 3,500 days, just under half the time of Shigenori's total reign. If the trend keeps up, he may break the longest held record mark for this track. But for now, Shigenori's 7,000 plus day reign will remain in the record books as one of the longest in speedrunning history. We're now at the tier of records that exceed two decades of being held, and incredibly enough, this one has proof from the time it was set. The first level of Doom, Hangar, had a completion of 9 seconds in-game time in September 28, 1998 by Thomas Panter Pilger, and while it doesn't have video proof per se, it does have a demo file. Demo files are special file types that Doom would log as you play, keeping track of all the player's inputs which allows you to play back the run in video form. It wasn't the only level that Pilger would set records on but it would be the longest standing for a few reasons. A task was made by Jonathan Rimmer proving 8 seconds was possible on the level, but the 9 second run was thought to be the best that a human could do, as the RNG required for 8 seconds to happen had very low odds. Combined with the skill required to execute, it wasn't thought the barrier would ever be broken, it was deemed impossible. This changed in 2019, 
when Foreshock Blast decided to grind attempts, and you should never say something is impossible when it comes to speedrunning. As you should have learned from this video, multiple records and times thought impossible have been broken over the years. February 23rd would be the day he finally broke the record. His own video has an explanation in the description of how it was possible, and Carl Jobs has a great breakdown if you're looking for another detailed analysis. For now, Pilger's record will stand in history as one of the few to remain unbroken for over 20 years, but now we're on to even greater records. This next record is still ongoing. It's approaching the 8,000 day mark, and it's the second run from Doom. In the 1990s, Doom was the competitive shooter, with huge competitions being put on by the game's developers. Seriously, id Software gave away a Ferrari at a Quake tournament. Adam Heggie, who maintained the Compet N website for Doom PC speedrunning from 1998 to 2005, would submit a fantastic speedrun of the nuclear plant level in the ultraviolence respawn category. This is significant for two reasons. Ultraviolence is the second hardest category on the original Doom, setting all challenges to their hardest in the code, and placing objects in their most difficult positions. Respawn refers to the command dash respawn, which sets enemies to respawn as you play through the level, something that normally only occurs on the nightmare difficulty. There are two more requirements for this category. You must kill 100% of the monsters and acquire all of the secrets, with respawned monster kills being counted towards your total for the level. Adam would set a time of 140.86 on April 10th, 1999 for a competition according to a file attached with his submission. As the other times came in, one thing was clear, Adam couldn't be touched when it came to this category. There are a few reasons why this record has persisted for so long, which are worth looking into. First, the UV respawn category is almost identical to the UV max category, with the added respawn setting not adding difficulty on this particular map. This led to future runners not paying much attention to the category as a whole, as it offered no additional challenge or reason to be ran. The second is that the Compet N site is no longer active as the hub for Doom speedrunning. DSDA is the current website used by the community. When the shift to the current website happened, the UV Max category was preferred by runners, which meant that UV Respawn faded into obscurity. Despite this, Heggie's record was by no means weak, as he was one of the better runners in the 90s. As it stands, his time will reach the 8000 day mark, unless someone steps up to slay the record, but that remains to be seen. Before we get to the longest held record in speedrunning history, here are some honorable mentions that you should be aware of. Now, we're on to the longest record in speedrunning history, held by one player that has endured through the decades to defend it rigorously. It's of course Mute City 1, the first track of F-Zero, and it has the distinction of housing the longest reigning record in speedrunning history, standing at a whopping 9,445 days. It has a very unique history, to say the least. According to a Japanese site that track records, Nintendo themselves claimed a time of 1.58.97 on this track at the day of release, likely set by a developer during testing. Legend, who we've seen earlier for beating the long-standing records in F-Zero, would beat the developer time just two weeks after purchasing the game, according to an old blog post. He clocked a record of 158.82 on April 24, 1991, and has seen few interruptions since first laying claim. The first came in May of 1991, when Morishita Takayuki would submit a faster time to the magazine making monthly updates for the game. But this only lasted around 15 days, as Legend took it back sometime in May or early June. Legend would set five more records in 1991, and then two more in the rest of the decade, coming in 1993 and 1996. It would take nine years from the time of his last record, but finally someone else would beat Legend, a runner by the name of Faust, 
who would improve on Legend's record by one hundredth of a second on September 6, 2005, being the most infamous day in this record's history. Legend would return, and through 2009 to 2012, he would lower the record 12 times, slowly creeping up on the sub-158, with his closest attempt coming on July 22, 2012, with a 158.03, but he wasn't going to leave the record there. For one final time in 2012, Legend would attack Mute City 1, and on August 1st, he'd set a 157.99, a time 21 years in the making. His final improvement came in 2015, and it's one of the few with video proof, as lots of his records have been lost to time. Clocking a 157.96, this would be one of the last records Legend posted in the game. Legend's total time holding the record is 9,445 days ongoing, with a 1,353 day interruption from Faust that took place between 2005 and 2009. Edward currently holds 24 of the possible 30 records in F-Zero, but Mute City 1 is a track that's eluded him since he picked up the controller. His PB currently sits at 158.14, just .18 behind Legend. The record itself is only a few years away from 10,000 days, and if it falls, Adam Heggie's record is the next in line for the title of longest standing record. But when it comes to Legend, Mute City 1 is truly legendary, and Legends Legends never die. Those were the top 13 longest standing records in speedrunning. There could be more lurking out there in the deepest recesses of the internet, and if they're ever uncovered, feel free to post them down in the comments. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon, and if you'd like updates and banter, be sure to follow on Twitter and join the Discord. Until next time.